Hi, Scissorin here, and today we are going to cover like survival. So if you feel like you're dying too much and maybe you want to start playing hardcore for whatever reason, then uh, this is going to be some like introductory, introduc, intro, introductory, introduc, introductory tips. I think that's it. I think that's the word. Words are hard. Restart now, dude. We're going with it. <laughs> Bye, YouTube. Right. Hi. Um, so that is what we're going to do now. Um, now, the number one tip for this is flasks. So it's something a lot of people, especially when you're new, um, will, will sort of like completely disregard and, and not care about enough. And um, it's the like number one thing that I would say like keeps me alive whenever I am playing hardcore. So let's talk a little bit about that and why and stuff like that. Wait, I think here. So fairly early on. Um, oh, that's, wait, is that a mana? Oh, yeah. Okay, um, 24, that's fine. 36. So very early on, I will start throwing some uh, somewhere like 24, 30, and 36. I will start throwing some transmutes. Uh, assuming that I have like 7 or 8 spare, I'll keep around 7 or 8. Um, for crafts, uh, and I'll talk more about crafts for survival in a second, but yeah, I'll keep seven or eight for crafts, and then uh, any like spare over that, I will um, um, throw on a life flask early on. I'd really turn down the music. Oh, okay, I'll turn it down. And yes, I can sing crest him. You can do like 30 or 40. Uh, anyway. So yeah, I would I would start like transmuting fast fairly early. I wouldn't necessarily do alterations. Uh, maybe maybe at level thirty if I'm feeling I don't have that much life. But um, getting a bubbling or seething early on. Uh, so let's say let's say we go for one at like level thirty six or thirty. Um, thirty is actually a pretty pretty good time to go for it. Um, and. Uh, what you would do is every time, like, if you get something like this, site, right, this is a nice suffix, so you could get uh, bleed immunity, freeze immunity, a few other things, uh, you would augment that. Now, this is pretty great. This is obviously better than a normal life flask, and you could keep that and then start rolling on a different one, because this is still going to help you survive more than a normal one. Um, but, like, the number one thing that is going to help you survive... Uh, and you can AUG pretty much any useful, well actually that one's arguably not useful. But you can AUG any um, suffix because the uh, instant thing is bubbling. So, um, this is bubbling, that means the half of the flask is going to be instant. So when we use it, we get life back instantly instead of waiting for it over time. And in Path of Exile, most of the damage that is going to kill you is very quick and very bursty. There's very little damage that's coming out and like slowly killing you over time like, Oh no! I'm going to die in around three seconds because the flask is- Oh no, I'm dead! Right? That's, there's there's very- uh, that doesn't happen that much. Uh, so that's why like bubbling and having like two life flasks while leveling is quite good. Um, a lot of racers and stuff will only use one and then the rest will be utility flasks. But uh, yeah, two life flasks while leveling and getting at least one of them being bubbling. Panicked isn't bad. But the problem with panicked is that, especially in hardcore, it's very easy to be in one shot range before the panicked actually goes off. Um, so yeah, normally I would say bubbling or seething is what you want. Um, and now for your other flasks, and these are also very, very important. Actually, we, like, a little bit more about life flasks. I would probably, um, normally what I do is I try to get bubbling or seething somewhere between 24 to 30, 30, I kind of like really wanted. I'd probably even use a few alterations if I don't get it. It's not the end of the world. I will just play less risky. Um, but, um, but yeah. Uh, and then like by 36, I definitely want to have it. So once I get to 42, I would probably craft a new one, bubbling or seething at, a, at the 42. And then I don't care anymore until all the way till divine. And then once I find a divine flask, I will craft a ideally seething of heat is uh, my preference. Seething of Staunching, which is the bleed removal, is good as well. But especially as a streamer, when I look at chat a lot, then I prefer having bleed removal up permanently. And freeze removal is like, doesn't kill me that quickly. So generally that's fine. Uh, but that's more preference, whether you have bleed immunity or freeze immunity on your instant buff. 
Uh, and then for your other flask. Now, finding a granite or a jade flask early on is huge. Uh, it gives you a large amount of defense. A jade flask means you just get hit very little in the, in the act, act, act 1 to 10. And a granite flask means that, sure, you get hit the same amount, but they will hit for very little. Because 3,000 armor during the leveling process is huge. Um, you don't get one guaranteed until the Broken Bridge quest in Act 7. But uh, here you do get one. You go into like a castle and you pick up a amulet and then you hand that in in town and you get the choice between basalt, granite, jade, diamond. Uh, it's a bit of problematic because if you're a crit build, you really need a diamond flask to go crit and you can't always like, you don't always find one. But yeah, granite, huge early on. And um, early on you won't have bobbles. But normally, I would recommend using four baubles on a white flask before starting crafting it. So, for example, um, on this one, remember that if you use four and a white one, then it is 20%. And then you can craft it afterwards. Now, some people are going to be thinking, well, why do I want a granite flask over basalt? Or why would I ever want a basalt flask? Um, especially if you use a granite uh, and you're like level 35, it'll probably say something like 60 or 70% fist reduction. Um, and a basal fast says 15%, right? So a lot of people might be wondering, what are the differences and when do you use each one? Um, right. So granite doesn't actually work the way that the game tells you it does. Even though it will tell you, it'll give you an estimated physical damage reduction here, that is a straight up lie and is not correct in any way whatsoever. So I actually have a message in my chat that explains this. Armor does not actually grant percentage reduction to physical damage that the tooltip states. There is a hidden mechanic where armor only grants at most 10% of the armor rating as a reduction in physical damage. For example, 25,000 armor will only ever mitigate at most 2,500 physical damage. Now, this is a bit unfortunate that it's not explained in-game really in any way. Um, this doesn't mean that armor is bad, it's just important to understand um, why and how it works and when to use it and when to use the different ones. Um, and what this means is that armor is extremely good against small hits, white monsters, blue monsters, stuff like that, whereas it's not great against potentially rares, essences, boss monsters, and stuff like that. So for example, if you have 80,000 armor, the max that could do, and that's a huge investment, right, getting that much, the, the most that could do would be reduce it by 8,000. Now, obviously, that is still a lot and very substantial, but it doesn't do anything against elemental damage. And 1439, thank you so much, dude. Appreciate it. Um, so, uh, when when do we use the Basel Flask? So, big boss mobs, like, you know, like, Vol is a great example. Like, Vol in Dried Lake or Izaro, like, anything with slams. Basels are a lot better with that. And then, Granite, I, I usually prefer, I usually use Granite up to, like, tier 7 maps. And then, as a quick example, just do some blood aqueduct and get some wild souls here. Uh, and a granite. Um, on pretty much any character, and especially during the leveling process, uh, a granite flask is going to be insane for wild molten shell. So, we're getting some souls here real quick, and then I'm going to show you. So, the way I like to say, as long as you have enough damage so you can kill bosses at a comfortable pace, uh, wild molten shell during leveling basically makes you immortal. Because, uh, let's see, we'll have the granite up here, and then there. Room is, is a granite as well, but, um, yeah, so, and, like, you, you don't stack them. But, yeah, room is, is a granite. So, here, with just a granite, we're getting 2,400. And depending on, like, if you're wearing any armor gear, it can be very easy to get a Val Molten Shell during leveling of, like, 2.5 to 3k. And for any boss during the leveling process, while this shield is up, you're not going to die. Uh, even like Dodri slamming on top of you or bouncing like right on you, she's not going to go through that 3k shield. So you can for those like 8 seconds or if you put in increased duration like 11 or 12, like easily burst them down. Um, and like having like 2 or 3k armor while leveling, extremely good. It like helps a lot. Uh, not sure you consider this a staying alive tip, but how do I get better at triggering flasks without using macro? I need to concentrate on game actions so I keep missing flask up time. Um, that is an excellent question. So I struggle a lot with that, especially when playing energy shield builds. Because, 
I used to have my movement ability or Q, so it would be like this, right? Uh, it would be like 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, Q, 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 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, Q, Q, Q. And that was pretty hard to do because I like you have to move your, your hand between 1 and Q, 1 and Q, which is annoying. Um, and then I changed my uh, main movement ability to spacebar. And then I have things like if, if I'm using something like shield charge that needs a second movement skill, then I know I would add the second one on mouse button 5. Um, and then 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 space is a lot easier because then you're using your thumb for the space button. So that's actually fairly comfortable. As for like uptime and stuff, whenever I am doing like mapping or farming, then I am uh, I'm overusing my potion. That's why whenever I get the map mod 50% uh, reduced fast charges or whatever, um, it, it's actually quite bad because I there's not enough monsters that I'm killing most of the time to have like permanent uptime. So I will normally just like sit here like this. And you sort of just get into like a rhythm of like doing it like subconsciously. And uh, yeah, it is mostly just like a habit you have to develop. Any tips for console players? You're screwed. I'm sorry, dude. Swap all hockeys to space. Um, so like that is just a habit. And like, especially if you have potions that like um, last shorter than the other. Like uh, one example would be if you're ever using an alchemist adrenaline. A lot of the time I'll put the, the potion that like lasts the shortest. Uh, especially if like competing and like trying to do maps very fast. Then I will have the potion that lasts the shortest on two. Because obviously that's the first one that gets pressed. Um, or sometimes it'll be something with like bleed immune to or freeze immune to whatever. I, if I feel something is particularly important. <laughs> but yeah, flasks, very, very important there. Uh, so Granite and Jade both are extremely, um, makes you extremely tanky. Jade will make you like barely get hit. Jade is particularly good against, for example, the porcupines that explode, like the, the spike poppers. Um... <clears throat> and then we also have um, Jade for a Trickster. So Trickster, one of the things that has is Ghost Shrouds. And what it does is that you will get Energy Shield back based on your Evasion. So if you have a lot of Evasion, you can get like 500 or 1000 Energy Shield back every time you're hit. Uh, so if you have like a buffer of even something like 400 or 500 Energy Shield on a Trickster, a Jade Fast makes you incredibly tanky. First of all, you're getting hit very little. And when you are getting hit, you're getting loads of Energy Shield back. So sometimes you're taking barely any damage at all. Um, Stib Knight, I'm personally not a big fan of. There are uses for it, but uh, I very rarely end up using it. Jade is most of the time better unless you have a crazy amount of evasion. And I usually have, in a lot of those builds, I usually have other sources of blind than the cloud itself. <clears throat> and um, another thing, speaking of blind, I haven't really talked much about cluster jewels lately, but since I... Uh, do I have one here? Yes, I have one as a quick example here. Disorienting display on cluster jewels. If you're using anything that uses elemental skills. And here I'm mostly triggering it with flame nash. It is insanely strong. Um, especially when I was using more AOE skills. The disorienting display blind is something like this. And when something's blind, it can like barely hit you. It's incredibly strong. Um, probably Isis. Most trickster builds could be advancing blow now, probably. Um... So that's, that's a like great defensive pickup as well that isn't related to flasks, but obviously it's sort of similar to how Stib and I work. Um, now, Basalt and Silver flasks are pretty worth talking about because... Um, let's go to my hideout so I can use flasks. Let's see. Um, so if I put this on now, you can see that it only gets one charge. And that's because both Silver... Um, silver and Basalt Flasks have 40 out of 60 charges that it uses. Now, we can get around that by rolling specifically 23% reduced or 20% max. Now, obviously, 20% max, while it has sort of the same outcome that it will give you two charges, 23% um, reduced is obviously a lot better because um, we'll, we'll get the charges back faster. So let's just, well, actually, I, I have one here with that already. So if you see on this one, then I can use two times, which is more in line with your other potions. Um, and that's that's generally what you want. Uh, same with silver. And part of the problem with like, using them early is uh, that both silver and basil can like feel pretty bad unless you get them. And they're, they're pretty hard to roll with 23%. Um, let's see. And then um, let's talk a little bit about immunities. So... 
whenever people ask me, they, they're, they're like struggling with the game, maybe they're dying a lot and stuff. A lot of the time, there are two main problems that these players have. They are not using really good jewels, like they have very, very weak jewels. Or they are potentially just have very, very bad flasks. So immunities in Path of Exile is very, very important. And a lot of the time, you don't need to get it from like items or your ascendancy or anything special or the skill tree. You can get it from flasks, especially for mapping and when you're not doing bosses. Because for the majority of the game, you're going to have um, permanent flask uptime for most builds. Like, unless you're playing very slow. Like, and, and there's like nothing wrong with that, but then you might want to look into um, other ways of getting elemental immunity. So for example, we're looking at my character here, right? I have freeze immunity, I have curse immunity, and I have shock immunity. And now I'm sure that some people are already noticing, well, there's something missing. Bleed immunity. So where does this character become immune to bleeds? Well, I don't. I do, however, become immune to corrupting blood, which I believe is... Maybe it's one of the cluster jewels I switched out. No, it is this one. So this one has corrupted blood. It cannot be inflicted on you. Now, this doesn't make you immune to bleed. So if you're um, facing a very powerful enemy with a strong bleed, which can happen. There's not very many of them. But there are still strong enemies that have bleed that isn't corrupting blood. That can still kill you. It might end up that you have to log out. But this is an amazing option for, for getting rid and like opening up free slots. Um, so very early on on SSF, I will start volleying pretty much any jewel that has any useful stats, particularly the life. Uh, I think this is like 1 in 20 or 1 in 30, so it's not something you will get particularly early, but it's worth working towards. But early on, you will want to have bleed immunity on your flask, and it's the most important one. I would say that it's bleed immunity is the most important, and then freeze immunity, and then curses. Uh, then shock immunity. Izaro does not particularly bleed hard. Um... And getting them on cluster jewels is particularly hard, but getting them on like a normal jewel isn't that bad. What does corrupting, corrupting an item do? So corrupting an item has a chance to destroy it, but also has a chance to give it an implicit. So if you see the, the corrupting blood here is like above the normal stats. What suffix on life flask is good other than blood immune? Yeah, so the main priority is the blood immunity, then freeze immunity, then curse immunity. Uh, and if you have, like, if you can do curse map, like, if I do, um, uh, let me, like, find, find a quick example here. Just in case that some people don't know. Right, here, this is temporal chains, right? So, this map now is temporal chains, which if you don't have a curse immunity flask, this can be really, really annoying. There's not very many curses during the campaign. However, even though this is on the map, as long as my curse immunity flask is up, the curse isn't on me. And this is the same for any curse, and, and no new curses can get on you too. So when you're mapping and you're clearing at a decent pace, then you have that like curse immunity and they just don't affect you at all. So for example, if I roll the map, right? Um, say it has like vulnerability and then physical damage uh, increase or like damage increase. That's a very scary map, right? That's two damage mods and can be pretty dangerous, especially if it's a tier you're... You're not. You're at the start of the league. You don't have a lot of survival. That can be fairly dangerous. But if you do have a curse immunity up all the time, then it's only like 30% damage. Um, and then, yeah, shock immunity is particularly important. I probably would bother a lot less with that on softcore. It's more of a niche thing that's going to like... It, can, it kills you a lot. I've died to not being shock immune several times. But they're more infrequent deaths that's... The lowest priority for softcore, definitely important for hardcore. Sometimes you need to sacrifice the adrenaline on your quicksilver for it, uh, like I've done here. And uh, yeah, other times you can get, there are other ways to get immunity too. You can get 100% ailment immunity through your gear and um, through the skill point uh, system with like anoints and uh, also crafting on items. Isn't the immunity gone instantly on an instant fast? Yep, that's, uh, that's a very, very true thing. So, um, that has actually been a really annoying thing this league. So, generally, freeze immunity, you are mostly getting frozen once, and then you react to it by using your potion, and then you're not frozen anymore. That was only true until Delirium, and I think both me and Steel Mage, for the most part, we were always using freeze immunity on our flasks. Uh, this league, we started having to change that and actually have to use bleed immunity a bit more on our flasks, and get freeze immunity over time. The reason for that 
Plus, uh, there's like something like, I don't know what else to call it, but an ice lance. Uh, it's like a huge like spell of ice that comes from one of the delirium monsters and that leaves like a big like delirium wall on the ground and that will continuously freeze you. And an instant flask is a really annoying way to deal with that. Uh, other than that, yeah, the Veritania monsters and some of the Veritania stuff has that too, but not as much. But if you're actually doing the boss Veritania, you want freeze immunity over time. But uh, yes. So, and but for the most part, this is still okay. Again, Veritania and Delirium, some issues with that, but for everything else, it's fine. Uh, one example is say, like, the, say the map device is a chest. As soon as you like click the chest, even if it's unID'd or blue or whatever, as long as you hit your freeze immunity, then it instantly removes it and you're fine. You just get into the habit. Maleficent, thank for the 16 months, dude. Thanks so much. Um, so that is some examples there. Um, other things that are worth mentioning. Roomies, it's a granite flask and it's also really, really good for defense. Uh, especially with the um, glancing blows, which is now a notable on the tree. Did he get nerfed at all? I can't remember. Uh, but Glancing Blows doubles your block, so it's very, very easy to get block capped with the Roomies. Um, and yeah, and there's skill tree points here. Like, for example, this is like block immunity with shield with spell damage. Block spell damage. Um, over here we have some like block, depending on what build you are. No, it's unchanged. Okay, sweet. So a lot of people are going to be using... Roomies is probably going to be very expensive. What about chill then? That's a problem without chill immune over time. I wouldn't say it's a huge problem. I generally am like completely fine having immunity to freeze and chill during very few things that continuously chill you. Well, it depends what kind of skill tree you have, Sephiroth. So but uh, yeah, Glancing Blow is going to be used quite a lot. Isn't it here or something? I can't remember where they put it. But yeah, Rumi's very, very good defensive class. You see all the armor still. The more unique classes you get, and unique classes are great, the more unique class you have, then you're going to have to get immunities in other places. Dream Fragments is an idea for like getting Freeze Immunity and then Corrupting Blood on a Jewel is an idea of getting Bleed Immunity. Yes, it is around there. Sweet. Um, Cinder Swallow, not particularly like a massively defensive class. It's it's nice with like the recovery on both Energy Shield and Life, but in this build I'm mostly using it for the mana. It, it definitely helps a lot, especially on Energy Shield builds and can be nice. It just gives you three up to 3% back of each when you kill something. Um, and then we have Basil Fast, like we've already covered, um, Taste of Hate, and, uh, this is a good segue into layered defenses. So, um, what Taste of Hate does, and, um, why this is a good thing for some things, is that it has physical damage from hits taken as cold damage during a flask effect. What's up, Nelky? Why are you being weird? Um, physical damage from hits taken as cold damage during a flask effect. And uh, yeah, the way that works is some builds, on most builds, you're going to have 75 or higher uh, resist. And um, uh, and uh, on those builds, like for example, let's take a Summoner Witch as an example. You might have very low armor, no endurance charges, and very low physical mitigation, right? And what this does then is instead of like 20% of your physical damage is then going to be taken... Um, against your cold resist. So this is particularly good if you're playing a build with extra high resist. Maybe you're using a lore weave. Maybe you're using a purity of some kind. And then that makes it very, very strong. Um, and then, for example, uh, a good way for something like that, like a witch with very little fist resistance, to deal with fist damage would be to have like a taste of hate and maybe a basalt if you're still struggling. Uh, and there are a couple of items that have like different physical damage from hits taken. Um, like and, and taking it as a different thing. Uh, this is also good, for example, if something had physical penetration, because that would still be physical penetration. It wouldn't penetrate the damage that you take as cold damage. Uh, I'm going to give a bit of a more advanced example on this now. Um, this won't be applicable to everybody, and it's like yeah, I'd say a very very advanced defense. I think it's this character, but I I still want to cover it. How does fast effect scale with fast? Well, if you like, if you get ten percent, like there are some fast will have certain thresholds, like a dying sun. You need to hit the thirty something. I can't remember what percentage a fast effect you need for an additional projectile, but for for most things, it's very straightforward. You just add the fast effect as a multiplier. 
or like as an increase. Right. Sorry. Uh, I wanna I wanna inc uh, explain a little bit uh, because this is this is a character that is sort of um, pretty much perfect in the terms of layered defenses, and I wanna bring this up as an example. Now, all of this is like fairly advanced, and not everyone will understand this, but um, I still think it's important to go through it for those who do. So this is one of those characters I talked about, like a um, um, a summoner without any um, without any um, uh, fist resistance, uh, and and it didn't like have a lot of endurance charges when I started. So I was like, how am I gonna make this a super tanky character? And this is one of the tankiest characters I've ever had. Even though it only has six thousand four hundred life, this was like face tanking awakener level eight, no problems at all. Now, there are several things that makes this happen, and like that's why I have loads of life flasks, because it's just something I used for Awakener. So, first we have Glorious Vanity of Zebakwa. I'm not 100% sure if they're making Divine Flesh just be naturally on the tree now, or if it is still going to be on the Glorious Vanity Timeless Jewel. The number doesn't particularly matter that much, this is mostly about getting the Divine Flesh Keystone. So whether it is still on the Timeless Jewel or if it's on the Skill Tree. If it's on the Skill Tree, that is probably too strong. I think they will... My educated guess would be that it's staying on Glorious Vanity. The main important thing here is that it's in the name of Zebakwa. The number just changes what the small nodes do. One of the things that it's doing here is that it's making one of the small nodes be plus one max Chaos Resistance and 19 Chaos Rest. And I have some other random stuff that I don't need here. Now, what does Divine Flesh do? Well... All damage taken bypasses energy shield. That means that I basically have zero energy shield right now. 50% of elemental damage taken as chaos damage and plus 10 max chaos resistance. Well, why is this good? So, with all of this, it's actually very easy to get uh, extremely high chaos resistance. So, I have 90% chaos rest here on this build. Um, and my build has been changed slightly. So normally, I think my normal resist is like 81, 82, 83 or something. But uh, they nerfed Necromancer since I played this build a little bit. Because they used to be uh, they used to be resist on something else. So I think it was like 81, 82, 83 or something like that. It was... Um, so we're running... Uh, well, we're running Purity of Lightning. I think it's 83 or 85 Lightning Rest. wonder if there's a quick way for me to fix that right now without breaking anything. I don't think so. Which is which is kind of annoying. Actually, I could remove the trigger socketed spell. Can I do cold and lightning rest? Just so we can like show my resistances as an example. There. 81, 80, 85 is my resist. Swap to commander. Yeah, I could have done that too instead of Mr. Sacrifice. So, but it, it does the same thing. I, I lose it either way. Anyway, so this is an example. Uh, so 81, 80, 85, and 90. And what that means now is that anytime I take um, lightning damage, so let's say I take 100 lightning damage, right? Then I will take 50 lightning damage against my 85 resist and 50 lightning damage against my 90 resist, which is extremely strong. Um, but the strongest part of why this is so important is because of the conversion. If something uses... Um, penetration, then it will uh, it will not penetrate on my chaos resist. And no, you don't need to be in lab to change your essences. You need to be in lab to change your core essences. So going from necromancer to elementalist, not from just like removing mistress of sacrifice. Um, so a couple examples where this is extremely strong is, for example, shaper. Um, the the beam and his balls, I think, both have penetration, and like uber elder. Uh, Uber at Ziri, they have a lot of penetration. Um, so then you're removing, or like only only a little bit. Beam doesn't penetrate. Okay, so it's just the balls then. So the balls penetrate, and that's extremely strong because they don't actually do that much damage. The reason why they're hitting your character so hard is because if you have 75% cold rest, you only have like 35 or 45 or something against that attack. Um, so if you actually half of that damage is taken while being fully resisted with 90%, you're actually taking very little damage at all. Now, there are some ways. You could use the Talisman as well. Um, so you would have like 50% cold damage taken as Lightning, and then you also have here 50% of your other cold damage taken as Chaos. Then it's not penetrating you at all. And the balls that will you've probably seen loads of people die to them or lose their characters to them, they will do virtually no damage. Um, 
Uber series, like double, um, oh, they turn it, they penetrate 25%. So if you have 75% cold rest, you would have 50%. Um, so that, that's a little bit about why Divine Flesh is so strong and why Conversion is so strong. And another thing that's really good about Divine Flesh specifically is it actually works on degens, whereas most of the other ways don't work. Um, can you show this in action? Somebody has like a perm league awakener, sure. Um, let's see. What else? Uh, and then people are wondering, how do I get the last 90% chaos rest? Well, there's a couple, there's a couple of things. So, um, normally you have 75, uh, yeah, normally we would have like 75% chaos rest as your max. Same as every other resist. And then we're getting here by Divine Flesh up to 85, right? Because it gives plus 10 max chaos rest. Then we still have five more chaos rest that I'm getting from somewhere. I'm getting one. Uh, from just the random number of my uh, Glorious Vanity that is making whatever notable this normally is into um, Cult of Chaos, which is plus one Chaos Rest and uh, also helps with like the baseline of the Chaos Rest. Um, and then on top of that, I'm using a Staffel's Frame because that's plus for all Max Rest, not just Elemental Max Rest. Uh, it's used so much on Righteous Fire builds where we don't have much Chaos Rest that people like forget that it actually gives you... Um, Chaos Max Rest as well. Um, but now, with, with just Sebaqua and the Glory, sorry, Divine Flesh, that's that's already great tank and helps a lot. But then we're still struggling against physical damage, right, on a Necromancer. Um, the reason I wanted to do this was I knew a lot of people were doing this build with Juggernauts because then you're so extremely tanky against physical damage. But I was like, well, I don't want to have no damage for Awakener. I still want to have a decent amount of damage. And in this league that I was playing this, a lot of people were using um, Skeleton Summoners. And they were doing it on Jug, and it was very slow. It was like five, six minute Awakener kills. And I was like, well, what if I do a Necromancer? Can I still be really tanky with Glorious Vanity and, and doing all this stuff, but still have a decent amount of damage? And I was like, yeah, I can. This is how I'm going to do it. So first off, I'm doing Soul of Steel, right? That's giving me 5% Fist Mitigation and plus 1 max Ellie Resistances, which is obviously always great. Um, here I have plus 1 maximum Endurance Charges. Uh, and here I have a Regen, a little bit of Life Regen for Endurance Charges. And then we're getting 1 Endurance Charge here. It's a Suffix Craft that you can unveil. Uh, so minimum Endurance Charges here, minimum Endurance Charge here. And minimum endurance charge here. And I'm also anointing Disciple of the Unyielding, which is a fourth minimum endurance charges. That's all I'm anointing it for. I'm not getting the damage or the endurance charge on kill. That's why I needed the max because my minimum is four, so my max needs to be four too. So that means that I'm getting 16% physical mitigation for my endurance charges plus some resist. And I'm getting 5% here, putting us at 21 Plus, we have some armor giving us a little bit of physical mitigation there as well. But that's not really enough either. I wanted, like, that's not enough to, like, tank, tank like, huge slams. Like, I was tanking the Meteor. Don't know if I can still tank the Meteor. But uh, in the patch I was playing this, I was tanking the Meteor. So, how else am I going to get further damage mitigation? Well, I'm going to use a Lightning Coil. So, now we're going from 21 fist mitigation to 30%. Because now we have 30%... Taken as lightning damage. Now, at one point, I theory crafted a borderline immortal build. It only had like 1.2k or 2k life, uh, but I thought it was immortal. It was extremely tanky. Um, what I didn't know that I've gotten confirmed since is that you can't convert twice. So, what that means is that this 30% physical damage taken from hits taken as lightning, you won't get 50% of that taken as chaos. So you can't take the damage taken as twice, which is a bad thing for us as players. Because if we could, then I wouldn't so much need the Purity of Lightning and High Lightning Rest. Um, and it would make the Divine Flesh a lot stronger. Because then I could try to take as much just as any elemental damage, and half of that again would be taken as Chaos. And I realize that this is getting a little bit complicated. Um, but because of this, I'm running Purity of Lightning. Um... And, and that's putting me at 85 lightning rest, right? So, even though I have very little physical mitigation, yeah, a lot of people didn't know you couldn't convert twice. But that's what broke my immortal build. That's the only step that didn't make me immortal. If we could convert twice, it would be, um, everything would be 90% reduction. Um, 
no, this isn't using a fast part. This is talking about layered defenses that I was using Taste of Hate to segue into. Uh, and Taste of Hate is another great thing, like Lightning Coil, where you have physical damage taken from hits. Very often used on Pathfinders and specifically. Why, though? I don't know. I don't know why. Um, and then I got extremely lucky. This is one of the best items I've ever found. Probably the second or third best item I've ever identified. Um... Because this is 10% physical damage from hits taken as chaos damage. You cannot craft this. You can only identify this. Uh, I found this in Delve. I ID'd it myself. It had 98 life. The 50 int, which I need int on this build. Um, the plus 2 minion gems. And then, yeah, the physical damage from hits taken as chaos. And why it's so good is because of the, the physical damage taken from chaos. It's so strong. <coughs> Sorry. Because we can't convert twice. Um, you can also get physical damage from his taking his chaos damage, um, on a Saffle's frame. You can evolve that. You can also get, like, other. You could double corrupt it and you could get some taking his chaos, some taking his lightning. What would the helmet be worth? Probably not worth that much. It's just, like, it's very specifically good for the way I was building, uh, in this league. Uh, like, I wouldn't have sold it for a mirror or two. Because it was, like, literally perfect, um, for my build. And, and nobody would have paid that much for it either. But like for my build, it was effectively priceless. But I, I wouldn't say that it was worth a lot. Because there were, like the worth is like mostly by demand. And there, it's not something there would be a huge demand for. Um, and then all my other stuff on this build was basically just life and resist. And it is a pain to get enough like chaos resist. Um, but a layer defense like this. Um, where you have like some taken like, against your elemental and, and some against physical mitigation is really, really good. And there's other ways of doing layered defenses as well. Um, let's go back on our other character. Uh, actually, let's see. Will we use another example of this? Do I have any essence strain characters that haven't been force respect? I should have some dead ones. <laughs> Great example of dead ones. I do have alive ones, but they have been like force respect. Because they're old. Um, let's see if we can find an old one. Because Trickster is a is a great, great thing to talk about. Um, can anyone remember what's the most recent Essence Strain character I had that died? Any mods would be able to help me find that? Because I feel like Trickster is a great, great example of like really, really good defenses. Saboteurs too, actually. Maybe on SSF standard. Skips Metamorph. I'm pretty sure this is it. Yes! Perfect! This is it. This is another example of a very, very layered defense, but different than the one I just... Um... That's why they're dead, yeah, right? Well, so I have like six or seven characters that have survived with these exactly these types of defenses and been level 100 and survived the entire league, but they are they're older now, so once they're three or six months old, they sometimes get force respect. This one was lucky and nothing in this skill tree was removed. So it didn't get force respect. It just has the option to. Um, but yeah. So let's look at a little bit of these defenses. Now this is a dead character. Um, and I think in this case I actually want to bring up the rip too. Because this is a... We're, we're talking about survival. Um, and I think this was a, a, a rip where there wasn't very much... There wasn't much you could have done except not do it. I think it's this one. No, not that one. Let's see, I'm just looking at a separate screen here. Yeah, I, would, uh... I think it might be this one. At least this is a either near identical character. I'm pretty sure it is this one. And like, even though it is an extremely tanky character, there's not much you can do here. Um, so this is just like, this is pre-nerf Metamorph. Before they nerfed it, this has been nerfed twice or three times since. And yeah, you're just dead. If you, if you put it on the monster, it wasn't particularly rippy, um, mods wise. The, the main thing it has is it has the, um, where is it? Oh, I've already clicked it. It has the Necrotic Barrage. And Necrotic Barrage has been nerfed several times since. But, like, that is, like, something, like... You're just... If you put it on, you died. There wasn't anything you could do. 
Um, so as you see here, you will have like a 0 0.02 second. Yeah, the Metamorph skipped my character. And this was an insanely tanky character. I was doing everything. Nothing could kill me. And that is actually in Path of Exile a bit of a problem. Yeah, it was a bit laggy too. It's a bit of a problem because when you get that tanky and there still exists, there's been a few things like this that you just, you will just sometimes die. That's a problem with Path of Exile. Um, some examples, Legion and Metamorph have had things that you, you're just, oh, it's time to die. Time to die mechanic, right? And they normally get nerfed, but in the first week, sometimes first two weeks, it's time to die. There's nothing you're going to do about it. You either avoid the mechanic completely um, or you're gone. Uh, obviously, I had like a crazy high defense on this character and it still just got wiped out. Um, so let's talk a little bit about what makes Trickster so tanky. Um, and let's see. Uh, there's no like fuck. I, I, like, without damage mods, at least let's just go into a no damage mod tier 15. Go into a no damage mod tier 15. Let's see, do I have cast on cast on this? Am I max block on this? I think this is just a tanky character. It's actually not the uh... The other one that died is actually tankier than this, even though this is more energy shield. The other one that died is tankier. Um, see if I have that one, because that is an even better example. It's an even better example of the other one. Even more layered. Scissorin Awakener is the max block. Thank you so much. That might be on standard then. Wait, what? Have I deleted it? I have a lot of them. Ah, there. We found it. It is on standard. Perfect. Thank you so much, man, with that. So, this is the... This is one of the tankiest characters I have. Um... With, uh, with flash ups, it's borderline immortal. I would, wow, wow, look how laggy my connection is today. That's weird. Right, so without anything up, I have um, chance to block 66%, um, projectile block 75, and spell block 74. Um, and uh, on my second bar, remember you don't have to click control to activate these spells. So if you see now when I click the hotkey uh, there, then I have 72, 75, 75, and this is without a roomies. Without a roomies. So, let's go into just uh, a Haunted Mansion here. Throw that on, and then... So, with Flass Up, you can see that like I'm like tanking like quite a lot of monsters. Now, obviously, you're still not... You still don't want to, like, sit in them. Um, and we're on Thunder, so I'll let the Flass drop, and you'll see, like, the difference. You'll see the difference as soon as the Flass drops, I drop. Right? That's sort of the power of flasks. And so what are the things here with, like, there are multiple things here making me tanky. It's not just one thing. So obviously, like, the, the max block thing we have. Wait, I don't think I had RS on there as well. I'm not 100% sure. Shit, what was on T here? Anyway. um, Oh, there. So there's, like, a couple of things here. He just doubled his deaths on the character. <laughs> Good one. Um... But yeah, so, oops, there. So, with just the block, like, you you can get hit quite a lot. And this is obviously a high tier red map. Um, and I don't think, right. There, there is, like, more tank you can do again. That would make me virtually immortal while standing still. Um, I actually have that on my, my other character as well. But, uh, this is, like, more of a budget version. The thing that really takes this to the next level is, uh, percentage of energy shield recovered on block. Right? So this is just max block plus trickster defenses. This does not have um, energy shield on block. With the energy shield on block, I could literally stand inside it. I don't have man with I can find us an example of the of a character like this I have with the ES on block. Because I should have one. They just might be older. I actually don't think they've died, which is a bit of a problem. So I think they're very old. Um, but with all the potions up here and why this is so strong is um, that I have a crazy amount of evasion. So I have 19,000 evasion, giving me a 59% chance to evade. And then I'm currently also using Glancing Blows, which is, I still take 50% of the, yes, you can get life, um, energy shield, and mana on block. 
Uh, currently, I'm using Glancing Blows, which is now being moved to an actual keystone here. It is no longer going to be on a timeless tool. It's going to be here somewhere. Um, and it's not getting nerfed. It's insanely strong. A lot of people are going to be using this for both Gladiator and Trickster this league. Um, and it is extremely... Scissoring can't stop as a shield with that mod. Perfect. Perfect. I think this character might have a roomies. Yes. Okay. So this character also relies on flasks, but in a different way. Um, oh, not so much, actually. Oh, mostly on the spell block. So for the attack block, it's mostly fine. Didn't that character have low boss TPS? Yeah, that was mostly a map clearing character. Well, I mean, it still killed the Waken Ray. Uh, what was here? Blight? Where's Blight? There we go. Right, so let's go in. Um, do I have Tempest Shield on this character somewhere? Yes, same hockey. So now we have 68, 75, 38. I don't know if this character needs the roomies to, to not die, but this has the 5% of energy shield. Um, yeah, so this is without any potions up at all. I'm not completely max plug, but you can see how much of the energy shield is coming back. Now I've popped my roomies up, so I'm actually 75%. So if I had 75% without the roomies, um, monsters, even in a red tier map, would have a really, really hard time killing me. And that's without the Jade Flask. Once you have both the Rumi um, and the Jade Flask up, or, you know, if you, without without a Rumi, still got Max Block up, which is very doable. Like you saw, my other character had that. Um, it just you, generally requires a slightly better shield. I only need 3% more block on the shield than I would be block up without the Rumi's, just not for spells. Um, so then, like, you can see that I can, I can stand in, like, pretty much anything. And uh, with the potions up, especially while moving, and we'll get to that as well, and why that is such a big defense in Path of Exile, monsters aren't going to kill you, um, and you ideally want to get uh, to the point where you, most of your defense is up without fast, because then you have the same defense against bosses. So, um, while mapping, this character was virtually immortal, um, and this one died to a fluke accident, and the other one died to, like, mostly they'll die to, like, insanely overpowered league mechanics, most of my deaths that league uh, can't happen anymore because they were later nerfed, like the um, like the uh, metamorph death you saw, right? So while it's something that can happen early league, if you're careful with the new mechanics, that's one way to uh, avoid them. So I think five out of my eight deaths in metamorph can't happen anymore because they've been either removed from the game or nerfed. You did die in an alt tab once, yes. Well, not all time, but I was looking at the different screen. But yeah, same thing. Incoming farm world deaths? Yeah. Oh, I hate this thing. <laughs> it's completely on my map. Anyway. Um, so, let's... let's uh, Now that we've showed it a little bit and how strong it is, let's talk a little bit about how it works and why it works. So, Trickster has a very, very baseline of being extremely tanky due to Ghost Dance. This is a really, really good for energy shield builds. And what it does is you have three Ghost Shrouds, that's the max, and you gain one every two seconds. So you want to be hit very little to begin with. Uh, and when hit, lose a Ghost Shroud and recover energy yield equal to 4% of your evasion rating. So then when we look especially with Flasks up and on this character, I don't even have that much and you still saw how tanky it was. You can very easily get to 20 or 30k evasion, but even with 14,000 energy shield, um, that's giving me 560 energy shield every time I'm hit. And on top of that, uh, I'm getting another 560 back. No way, a little bit more, like 610 or something from this. So that means that while I have Ghost Shrouds up, I'm getting 900 energy shield back every hit. And when Ghost Shrouds are down, I'm getting 500 something, 600, whatever. Um, so that is an incredibly powerful mechanic and, and um, makes Glancing Blow so good. Because even though you're taking 50% of the, the damage, it's, it's crazy. Your amulet on this character is insane. Yeah, um, this was, this was uh, obviously we had, we had to delete the clip uh, of me dying because of the the DMCA stuff that lately happened on Twitch. But we have backed it up, so we will still we're gonna make like a highlight video to reminisce. But um, well, this wasn't the character that I died on and slammed the table. This was the reason why I slammed the table because I lost two characters within eight minutes 
and I was so upset about losing this amulet and I had two different people messaged me and was like, hey, can I marry your amulet? Because on Hardcore Trade League early on, this is 100% mirror worthy. Not so much on Softcore and especially not on Standard, but on Hardcore Delirium, there are rarely items like this. And this is the third or fourth mirror worthy item I would have. How much is this amulet? It's something other people would mirror. That thing is still insane. Yes, but on Delirium, like or on Softcore Trade Leagues, there's so many more people crafting and perfecting items and there's so much more currency that it's borderline, but I would still like, somebody's probably gonna craft something better than this um, on those leagues. Whereas on Hardcore, no, right? Nobody's gonna craft something better than that on Hardcore. Um, I thought you said it was 200x. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's hard to put an exact price on it. 100 to 200 eggs. How I crafted this was just Awakener Orb. And I had... Um, I got incredibly lucky. This is one of my luckiest crafts ever. I had plus one Chaos Gems. And I had the Damage Over Time Multiplier and a different amulet. And I merged them together. And I got the plus one Int um, as a random roll. What is Mary Free? I usually have very cheap Mary Freeze just to like... I like helping people. So like 10, 30C. Something like that. I don't really care few X, whatever people want to pay. Um, and like on Torment Ren, Axis, the other thing that I had um, a mirror fee on was Torment Ren. Most weapons on Standard had like 100 to 110 X mirror fee. Oh, ask what a mirror fee means. It means that people can mirror your item and they'll pay you to do it. No, it's still not, it's not undisputed anymore. But like on Torment Ren, I got messaged a lot of people we're like, why are you letting people marry your weapon so cheap? You're making the rest of us look bad. And I'm like, yeah, but you guys are being greedy. Because I had like a 30x mirror fee or something where everyone else had like 110. And I was like, that's still a crazy amount of money. People are like, make it higher. People will still pay it. And I'm like, yeah, I know. But like, I don't care about standard currency. I'd rather help people. This is great. Um, so yeah, I got a lot of angry PMs from like the people who have a lot of mirror services. But yeah, generally I have it quite cheap. Anyway, let's uh, go back to the task at hand because we're wasting people's precious time here uh, by talking about nonsensical things. Um, so this is an energy shield character, which we haven't really talked about, but energy shield is more of an advanced... Um, it's more of an advanced type of defense because a lot of new players are going to be a bit uncomfortable in the start with having uh, no instant life flask. And um, so, so that's already a bit different. And then the way that works, just like a quick TL there and an intro to CI, it, uh, you take this node, your max life becomes one and you're immune to chaos damage. That's all it does. Uh, but then it's usually easier to stack a lot of energy shield than it is life. So for example, you know, from these gloves, I'm getting 170 energy shield. From this, I'm getting like seven or 800 energy shield. This is one of my best characters ever. I was so sad when it died. Even plus two A, we gems chest. Uh, and a barrel of, oh, actually heartbreaking looking at this character. This, not that much energy shield, but it's like a lot of damage from this. Um, and then a lot of energy shield, like it's, it's a lot easier to get than life. So you can very easily get 9 to 15k energy shield. Whereas, uh, getting over 7k life is, uh, a bit problematic. Um, so, uh, and, and it doesn't add any energy shield, uh, but the energy shield nodes are closer together on the tree a lot of the time, less pathing, and the cluster jewels for energy shield are insane as well. This was a pre-cluster jewel character. Yeah, this was SSF. That's why it was kind of special to me. Um, what else? Um, why no plus three bow? Well, I don't really want to talk about the character, but that's mostly a defensive thing. Plus three is more for damage. This is for a super tank. Um, yeah, it's like some of the best SSF gear I've ever had. Uh, what else? And then we have, um, yeah, all the energy shield. So let's go back to talking about Trickster and the defenses. So like I said, you get loads of energy shield when you get hit. And another thing that's really cool is Escape Artist. So you get one energy shield flat per six evasion rating on the uh, body armor. So that means that you can get a lot of evasion still and it doesn't convert it. You don't lose that evasion rating. You get to keep the evasion and it gives you energy shield. Which is insane. And and this build, like, with all this defense, kills Awakener extremely easy. I have, like, 400,000 damage on Essence Drain. Like, it's very, very quick Awakener kills on this. Um, and if I had Cluster Jewels, it would be, like... 
So uh, that's incredibly tanky as well. So Trickster, just an insane ascendancy. You have Patient Reaper, which is the uh, uh, energy shield back on kill as well. So whenever you're killing things very quickly, back to full. Um, and then recovery rate so that you um, regen more. So that is like a, a quick mention of the Trickster defenses. And these are good no matter what without other stuff. Now other than that, I also have uh, Max Block like we talked about. Uh, 75, 75, 50, and then um, 56 spell block with Tempest Shield up. That is pretty much always up. You just have to cast it at the start of the map. Um, so very, very high block there. And then we have the, the other thing that is like the Recover Energy Shield when you block. So that's like a quick example of this type of layer defense. And if something goes through, um, we have a Basalt Flask that helps with the Fist Mitigation plus one Endurance Charge. What's the... Oh, 5k life is the same as 5k energy shield. Um, however, things like freezing, even when you are CI, is still based on your life that you would have if you didn't have energy shield. So, um, when you are playing energy shield... Hold on. I'll show you real quick. Oh my god, I don't have one regret and I don't want to regret my entire skill tree. Um, if I didn't have stun immunity right now... So, on Trickster, you have stun immunity from your... Um, you can't get stunned while you have Ghost Shrouds. No wait, which is it? There, yeah, it is that. It's just on Escape Artist. Cannot be stunned while you have Ghost Shrouds, which is most of the time. You most of the time have it, so you're fairly stun immune. But if I didn't have that, most characters will have to get stun immunity or use a Valyrium or something else. I'll show you why. Because getting stunned and frozen is based on your life if you didn't have CI. So right now, the game thinks I have 1,982 life. It does not think I have one life. That's not why you get stunned so much. Um, so it thinks I have basically 2k life, uh, which is still very little. Uh, and that's why you'll get frozen very often and stunned very often. So freeze immunity and stun immunity. Quite a lot. Why not prolonged pain over swift killer? It's much more damage. That's a great question. Uh, it's actually not more damage, and we're going to cover that now. It's actually covered in all my Trickster videos. I usually, like, Prolonged Pain is better for boss damage, but the 16% damage from Swift Killer and the Frenzy Chargers, plus the 40% uh, more damage, sorry, increased damage from the Frenzy and Power Chargers, is actually more. So, Swift Killer is better, um, unless you can get Frenzy Chargers. So, if I had minimum Frenzy on these three, then Prolonged Pain would be better. And Prolonged Pain is better for boss sites where you can't channel and keep your Frenzy Charges up. But Swift Killer is better if you don't. So for clearing, it's always better. And the scale effect duration doesn't matter. Um, yeah, Pantheons are pretty worth mentioning for defense. We'll do that later. Uh, I just want to talk a little bit more about Trickster. Um, so yeah, we have the Basalt for when they go through. And Endurance Charges are great as well for if damage comes through. Um, so incredibly tanky and can do everything and like a character like this I have a shit ton of damage as well I know it can be a bit of a struggle getting damage on essence drain, but um, with cluster jewels you can very uh, I say very easily, but it is actually pretty hard, but you can get up to like 500,000 dot damage um, My Nora matter. Yeah is definitely a really really good source of defense. It's used a lot on hierophants and stuff uh, Hierophants can get 40% my Nora matter uh, and it, it is very, very strong on Archmage characters. Where do you get Endurance Charges from? At the moment on this character, just from the minimum Endurance Charge craft, which I use quite a lot on Hardcore. No Crystal Bell? Um, no. So I didn't... Uh, this is a SSF character, and I never managed to find a Influenced Crystal Bell. I didn't find a Crusade or Exalted Orb. And uh, I found this really, really nice Chain Belt with Percentage Energy Shield. This is one of the craziest SSF characters I've had. It's transferred back on Standard now, but yeah, it was on SSF. And yeah, all the gear is from SSF. That's why I have a lace with spirit shield. If you're using essence drain as well, um, sorry, blight as well, then it should feel really good damage with 400k dot damage. Like this character had 350, and I would switch to prolonged pain to get it up to 400k if I was going to awaken her on this, because like I said, swift killer isn't that good on boss kills. But uh, this is mostly a clearing character right now. Can you explain plus one minimum? Yeah, you craft this on and then you always have plus one minimum. It cannot be used by charges. So Immortal Call, Flicker Strike, minimum charges cannot be used. But they're always on. 
So they're incredibly strong for stuff like that. Um, let's see. What else? Well, accuracy. Like, you want to be accuracy kept on anything that needs it. So, like, bow or attack skills. You want to have 100%. But for spells, there's no accuracy. So for this character, it doesn't matter. Not at all. Not really here to talk about ED builds divinity. We're right now talking about survival. Um, let's see. Let's cover more. How about gladiators? Gladiators, really, really good. Extremely strong in the upcoming harvest. They, because glancing blows, um, is going on the tree. So both tricksters and gladiators are going to be extremely flavor of the month in hardcore. I believe depends on other changes, but like that's an early prediction. Uh, I would say we're going to see a lot of gladiators, tricksters, and berserkers. Um, because of like glancing blows and capping, but w like because of war cries, definitely a lot of berserkers. Um, fortify is something I'm currently getting from my shield. There's a couple of different ways to sorry from my shield charge. There's a couple of different ways to get fortify. Depends what you're doing. Uh, if you're doing like this where it's a map clear, having it on shield charge is great. You're gonna have fairly high uptime on it, uh, and most of the time it is uh, yeah going to be up. Uh, let's see. So most of the time it's going to be up. Four bosses. A lot of people will use the... Is it called the Vigil? I think it's called the Vigil. Um, and um, it lets uh, Vigil and Strike last for like 20 or 30 seconds when you use it. That's really good for boss fights. A lot of people will use that. A lot of people will use that for boss fights on Hardcore. Will you be able to enchant Cleansing Blow on Amulet in 3.11? You will not. Elusive. Elusive's great. I don't use it that much, but it is pretty good. Um, phasing as well can be uh, both elusive and facing because it's like straight up mobility can be a very, very strong defense in Path of Exile. Now, obviously, I showed earlier that on this character, I could stand completely still inside monsters and just face tank, right? Um, but something else, I don't know if I have maps here let's go just grab a tier 13 let's hope this still counts as the tier 13 waterways yeah i finished terraria i'm not playing that anymore moon lord expert hardcore down let's see always maybe enough yeah you want to like movement very very important so um like while moving around on this character, you are virtually immortal as well. Like, I showed all the defenses this character has. Um, and uh, while fasts are up and moving, nothing is going to kill you. Because most of the time, you're moving out of range of the character. Uh, which is like, an incredible way to to mitigate damage. So, um, like, yeah. And, and while face tanking, this is still, like, extremely strong. But... Um, it's a, it's a very important thing to talk about in layer defenses because of a few reasons. Uh, and that's where it makes a, a very strong thing with things like um, Stormbrand or brands in general or builds that let you activate something or play something down, like Essence Drain, for example, as well, uh, and then move around. Because on Essence Drain, what I can do is I can boop, Essence Drain the boss, throw down a totem, um, and then just Essence Drain the boss and move. So that is one extremely strong defense there as well. Yeah, leeching and regen is really, really nice, especially for boss fights. Doesn't really help mitigate one shots, but uh, a lot of boss fights do have a lot of degens. So juggernauts will go, uh, juggernauts and chieftains will go very hard on regen. And then you have a lot of other builds like slayers will go on leech. Let's um, try to think what is a great example. Isn't this a good example? Um, of over elite is a very very strong thing especially for mapping yeah we'll go back to this character this is a great example of that um so this is the character i showed earlier it has 5k life and it has 2000 energy shield and it more importantly has over elite it also has blind um and it has uh, some block oh it actually has a lot of block oh this is like such a layer defense character it's very similar to the trickster character with like the, the block and, and life regen and stuff. Sorry, uh, block and uh, life recovery on hit. 
Uh, but uh, it also has Overleech, uh, which is something Slayer has. I'll show now. So if you look at my energy shield, uh, this basically has Slayer Leech. Well, how are we getting that? And this is changing a little bit in Harvest. It's getting kind of easier to get. Uh, you can get it as a notable or still from Soul Tether. Soul Tether is being changed to give you the notable. And what this does is Life Leech effects are not removed at full life. Oh, and it's actually getting nerfed a little bit to the best of my knowledge from what I've been able to glean. Uh, it's getting nerfed a little bit because I think it's no longer Life Leech effects. Um, Life Leech is twice as strong as Energy Shield Leech. Because um, when you're doing uh, there, it is 50%. 50% less. So it's like twice as strong, basically. Um, just being able to have your Life Leech, Leech Energy Shield. And the way this works and what this belt does, why it's used so much on hardcore, is very rarely used on softcore. Extremely often used on hardcore. It'll be like 2 to 3x on hardcore. Um, and, and what it does here is that um, once my life is full, it'll use my life leech, which uh, you can like have be like a fairly high amount. But that life leech will leech at full capacity energy shield. So... What is happening right now, even though I'm completely full, or virtually completely full, um, because I'm always losing a little bit, um, and my life leech are not removed at full life, um, even though, like, if I take damage now, it'll instantly fill back up. And that's different than normal, because if you just have leech, right, normally, without anything special, what will happen is you take damage, you will leech back up, and that'll have to, like, Sort of like wind up. There's like a wind up time on leech. Um, it'll wind up and you'll go from maybe 4,000 life to 5,016. And then your leech will stop. You'll take damage again and it'll start again. It'll wind up and leech you back up to full. However, with the way we've set this character up and soul tether and why it's so strong. Is that it's sort of like regen. It's always online. You're damaging, you're leeching. And that's like insanely strong. Insanely strong. Um, and Slayer has this too. Uh, Soul Tether, obviously extremely great. Uh, and they're changing and, and giving like a... Was it a Keystone? I think they're just adding that as a Keystone now for next thing. Um, that's really good. Yeah, it's a Keystone. And then this belt is going to have that Keystone. One day I'll understand PoE. Well, that's why I try to make these videos. Because I know even though a lot of things are complicated, I try to make it as easy to understand. And I know that my, my way of explaining isn't going to go through to everybody. There might be people watching here right now being really frustrated because maybe they feel stupid that they can't understand what I mean. But maybe just my style of explana explaining things aren't good for you. Sometimes some people will enjoy the way Carve enjoys things. Some people will enjoy the way Don the Cron explains things. But hopefully, hopefully it's helping at least some people in chat. Right? It's not necessarily that one of us are explaining it in a bad way. There's just different ways of processing information. So hopefully it's helping some people. Still better than the wiki entries? Yeah. Um, and there's, there's so many like different ways of doing layer defense that you can do. What's the best guard skill? Yeah, I just realized I probably should have set aside more time for talking about defense. Because there's so much to talk about. Um, guard skills. So you have, um, you have Arcane Cloak, you have Steel Skin, you have uh, Molten Shell, and you have Immortal Coal. And there's loads of different times to use them. Um, Arcane Cloak, extremely good for Archmage characters. Uh, Arcane Cloak, I would say, is more used as a DPS ability, not so much as a Guard Skill. Steel Skin, insanely good if you don't have a lot of armor and you're a caster and you are about to take a slam. It's very, very hard to use because it is hard to know and be experienced enough to be like, oh, I'm about to take 5,000 damage. I need to use my guard skill. Some people will just put their guard skill on mouse button one. So imagine this was steel skin. This is one way of using steel skin. You can have it on mouse button one. And you're just getting free defense every now and again. Now, this is sometimes not going to save you. Sometimes that will just mean that it's on cooldown. Um... And you'll die. And you can use Vol Molten Shell and Steel Skin together, but not normal Molten Shell and Steel Skin. And you have to use the Steel Skin and then Vol Molten Shell. I think. 
Um, but for example, I'll give a quick quick example here. So let's just remove that here. There, boom, steel skin. So you can just have that here. It's not going to interrupt your life or do anything at all. It's just going to, for two seconds now and again, give you, well, at level 154 life. But if it's level 20, you know, you don't have to have it as a trigger skill. This is very useful as a survival thing. You can do this with a couple of things in Path of Exile. It's basically anything that is instant. Um, so sometimes what I'll do, if I have the ability to, this is very underrated, going to be used even more uh, next patch. Um, shit, but they're they're probably removing Balakrai, right? Because they're adding a Keystone, which is Warcry or Instant. So I'm guessing Balakrai is removed. Currently, we would anoint uh, Warcry. But, sorry, Balakrai. Now it's going to be a Keystone, so it's more going to have to be about actually traveling there. Or there will probably be other ways of getting the Warcry Keystone too. There are some ways for sure, like the uh, um, chest that gives you a Keystone. Can't remember what it's called. Doesn't really matter. Nobody uses it. But uh, can't anoint it anymore, which is sad. But uh, currently, I've been using this quite a lot. And then put, putting Battle Christ on there. And if you are a character that can have instant War Christ, next patch, like you're probably going to need to be not. You're going to have a hard time as a um, Shadow or a Ranger. But uh, you can do that with instant War Christ. You can also do it with um brand recall this was very popular especially on softcore not so popular in hardcore because if you run into a pack with your brand recall on cooldown it's very easy to die um but yeah you could get cooldown recovery no not to have 100 you can't have 100 of time um but yeah so definitely can be really great to have something instant casting there Is there a leech recovery ES life mechanic related to dodge instead of block? No, but getting loads of block and loads of dodge is great too. Yeah, I have a hard time managing Warcry myself. It's very, very hard, especially while streaming to manage stuff like that. Definitely one of the reasons why I love having it um, auto casting. Um. How strong is Valpite? And when should I take it? That's something I only take with Overleech. So either like the belt and a similar mechanics to that, or the Slayer Overleech, and then I would take it. When you're like when your main defense or re recovery is re uh, Leech, then I'll take Valpite. I think so, Fortisac. Yes. And two autocasts of Warcrys. You put, for example, Enduring Cry on mouse button one, and you need to have. Well, right now, Balakrai, but next league, they are removing Balakrai and adding a um, Keystone, which is going to be here somewhere. Or here? I think it's here. I think it's here. When is Iron Reflexes worth? I haven't used Iron Reflexes in three years. I'm sure there are cases where this is good for survival, but I don't feel like I've used it enough recently and know enough about it to really expand on Iron Reflexes. So I'd rather skip that and just say that I'm not knowledgeable enough. Iron Grip location is going to be Warcry. Okay, perfect. Sometimes it's important to say that you don't know enough. Um, what are some other things we can talk about? Is it feasible to make a high block character spellcaster? Yes. This is that. This, like, Trickster can do that. It's very possible next thing. Stuns, dodge. When you talk about dodge, stuns, not so much. I don't want to like cover stuns as a form of defense. It's also not something I use a lot. Um, dodge, definitely great. Um, so something that can be very hard is getting high dodge or especially high spell dodge on a energy shield character. Now there's a couple of tricks for that. The jewel that drops from Awakener can be put here. And that usually ends up being fairly cheap as well. So this isn't something that's like crazy expensive. Um, some leagues they've been under 1x. Um, sometimes they're between one or two and the way that works is like you can put it here and you can anoint face acrobatics without taking acrobatics now this gives you 30 percent spell dodge and then there's quite a lot of ways to get normal dodge so like elusive um some ascendancies have some dodge and then you also have cluster jewels uh it is a bit harder to get dodge if you got block and dodge cap very hard to die sometimes a one shot might sneak through but if you're like protecting against one shots, extremely hard to dodge. Uh, die, sorry. Uh, and yeah, Quartz Flask as well. Great source of dodge. I use Quartz Flask quite a lot. Um, one sec.
Um, so in leagues where there's um, let's see, Legion and Delirium are both examples of where course class was used a large amount of time. I'm not sponsored by anyone right now. Um, just method and method sponsors. But yeah, um, Delirium and Legion are both leagues that had like a shit ton of attacks, right? They weren't necessarily hitting for that much. Sure, there were one shots, but the majority of the league, um, the majority of the league was just a, a plethora of attacks at the same time. And then dodge, block, and stuff like that becomes insanely powerful. And evasion. They are all like, and we've already covered evasion and stuff. Um, yeah, that's just cope. But if you take that jewel spot, it's three points. So that's only one more point than what it would take to travel to face Echo, isn't it? So the example I was giving there was specifically for energy shield characters or uh, hybrid characters that have a lot of energy shield. Like if I have 9,000 energy shield, right? I don't want to give away 30% of that. And if it's an energy shield and block character, I don't want to give away my 30% energy shield and 30% block to get that. Castle damage taken? Sure. Um, oh, actually, before we do castle damage taken, let's talk about um, Immortal Call and Molten Shell. I have another example of this. This is my current Awakener killer. I'm very surprised that this is my Awakener killer and I wouldn't, wouldn't have expected this. But this character is a Berserker actually using Aspect of Carnage on Hardcore. Never died. Killed Awakener uh, 40, 50 times. Uber Elder like 10 or 15 times. Every boss. Cortex, everything. With 6.8k life and Aspect of Carnage. It was very, very tanky. Uh, and it's a War Cry Berserker. Um, it has a lot of damage with everything up, but still like a fairly low DPS boss killer. Probably still one of the higher ones I've had. For those of you who don't know on Hardcore, it's very, very normal to go very low damage characters, but they aren't going to die, right? And what that lets you do, if you can farm the boss repeatedly, you can, if you get lucky on drops, in one day easily clear 100x in a few kills, right? Because something like a Dying Sun, depending on the meta, it could be anything from 8 to 20x. The amulet could be like 15 to 30. Boss kills are really high value on hardcore. So regardless if it takes you a while to kill the boss, if you can be very confident in not dying, that's incredible. And very few people will be able to farm bosses without dying at all. Um, and this character actually has cast on damage taken Immortal Call. That's not something I've been using lately. Um, but uh, I think that's something that's going to be used quite a lot next week. So... Um, I have 5 Endurance Charges here, which means that 15% uh, less physical damage taken per Endurance Charge removed. So whenever Immortal Call procs, which is quite a lot, I am getting 75% Fist Reduction from my Immortal Call while that is up. And then I obviously have a lot of other... I'm, I'm like... And, and, and the Endurance Charges instantly come back, right? That's the thing. Like, if I let these expire now, I don't need to do multiple Enduring Cries for them to come back. And it's auto casting because it's a mouse button one. It's a berserker, so it's up so much. So on this character, I'm, I think I'm borderline or straight up immortal to physical damage because of that. Because immortal call is going to be up so much, giving me seventy five. Then I have fifteen. Is there a hard cap on fist reduction right now? I don't know if there's a hard cap on fist reduction right now. They started doing hard caps lately, which is lame. I don't know if it is 90%. Is it? I'm pretty sure you're right. But it, like they changed it so much and they've lately been adding them. But anyway, so let's say that I'm on 90% fist reduction. With 7k life, 90% fist reduction. There's... I think the only thing that I could think of that could kill me would be a Val Slam. I think that's the highest damage in the game. Like, if you go into the Shaper and you get Val there, Val slamming. I think that's the only thing that you one shot, because I think that's 60,000 damage. Uh, and Malachi and Core, sometimes... I don't know if they've balanced him. Sometimes he can hit for 60,000. If you're consuming 5% charges, it should be 100% fist reduction. No, no, it's 15. 15 less. 
Oh, you're right. 31% less physical damage taken. Okay, I'm on this character, I'm virtually immune to fist damage. And we've seen that I've like taking very little. Uh, and it's actually using some of the um, some of the layers I've talked about earlier, which is divine flesh. That's how I mitigate elemental damage on this build. Now it's still not a, a crazy high tanky build because um it's just the same as having like 85, 82, 82 or something like that. So it's not insanely tanky, but it was tanky enough to survive a full league of hardcore. I didn't play that much on this character. Uh, mostly logging. I leveled it up very quickly and then used it to kill bosses. And I would normally get to those bosses um, on other characters. And I didn't do any mapping pretty much on this character. Uh, so I'd say it's mostly like log in, five minutes, kill a boss, log out. It's mostly what I use this character for. Um, right. So, uh, but what I wanted to talk about was like the castle damage taken in Mortal Coal. And this is a great use case for that. When you're using cluster jewels to make sure that you're always getting full charges from Enduring Cry, then it is insanely strong. I normally don't use castle damage taken in Mortal Coal anymore. Uh, most characters don't generate Endurance charges fast enough that you really want to um, get rid of them. Uh, but obviously this is like full, full, full. And... We'll see a lot of this next thing. A lot of this next thing. Um, everything is math, yeah. Uh, Castle never taking steel skin. Not bad, but I'm not a big fan of it. I'd rather have it auto casting on mouse button one. I think that's a lot better uh, for most people. And, like the problem with castle never taking is obviously that the uh, the way it works. If you, I'll, I'll go over it a little bit quickly. Castle Damage Taking can only cast spells that have a required level lower or equal to than itself. That means that um, if I level up Immortal Call one more level, it's going to be required level 58 and it will not be casted, right? Uh, so that means that with anything like Golems or any anything at all, you're either going to need a high level Castle Damage Taking, which will mean that it will happen less, or a low level Castle Damage Taking and you'll be able to do less powerful effects. Um, so that's a little bit problematic and why I don't use it that much anymore. I do like using Cast and Damage Taken. It's used for me a lot with Curses and Tempest Shield and stuff like that. Yeah, Vash. Okay, so my Immortal Call alone is 82% fist damage taken less. It's incredibly strong. And this was face tanking Awakener, easy PC. Probably not the meteor. That'll probably kill me. Enduring charges without enemies. What is this? So that is because of the cluster jewels. And they're staying. Uh, I don't think. I don't know. They probably should nerf the cry a little bit. I mean, they have to. They have to. There's no way they're keeping. There, there's no way they're keeping cry wolf mob mentality uh, exactly the way it is right now. Lead by example is pretty balanced. It's very strong. It's very like looked down on like as a as a weak. One, it's like you get an endurance charge and 4% more damage. Um, so it's insanely strong. But um, yeah, no, the the mob mentality is, uh, yeah, you gain five rage when you war cry and recovery speed and cry wolf. And this is important. War, cry, war cries count as having 10 additional nearby enemies. So when I cry, I get full endurance charges, even though there's no enemies here. So, they're going to have to nerf some of the shouts, 100%. Like, they were OP this league. Like, if um, if the Herald stacking wasn't a thing, Warcry stacking was the next best thing. Warcry's trigger based on enemy strength instead of count? Yeah, but they're still going to nerf it. They're not going to just make it the same as that it's going to count as um, 10 enemies worth of, of, of strength. They're... Definitely going to make them weaker in some way. When do you use Blood of the Crew over a normal life flask? Mostly, mostly never. Some fights that have a lot of degen, it's not bad just because it has so much life over such a short time. But yeah, mostly degen fights. So either Awakener or Uber Elder is the only thing I use it on. Uh, Forbidden Taste is used when you have close to 7k life and there's fights with a lot of one shots. All the nodes will stay the same. SRS nerfed. Wouldn't even surprise me at this point. <laughs> this is using Bladestorm. At the moment. 
It was a great character. Very happy with how it turned out. Uh, it was a little bit stressful and annoying to play. I talked a little bit about this uh, in the War Cry uh, manifesto because this character has to do Rallying Cry every 30 seconds manually. And that was a little annoying. Like when you're playing for like 10 hours a day and shit, it's a, it's a little bit annoying for mapping. It makes it like a bit enjoyable switching. But, uh, and there's some cool, like, defensive, uh, cries for next patch coming out. And Enduring Cry is going to be amazing. Weapon crafting is over. Why not Cyclone? Because it's not a good bossing ability compared to this. Well, I mean, it is, but this is better for what I needed. Uh, what was the thing I said I was going to cover next? I've done Castle Gnomes Taken. I talked mostly about that. I talked about Immortal Coal, Molten Shell, Steel Skin... Yeah, you can... A lot of people were using this to build more map there. Pantheons. Pantheons. Uh, and thank you so much, Ulhan, for the 23 months sub. Perishem for the 41 months. Unknown one for the 18 months. And Destroyer for the 43 months. Maybe prep. But yeah, Pantheons. So, it's a little bit... Um, changes a little bit based on your character. Um, this is very frequently used by me. Uh... Once you get the Capture of the Terror of the Infinite Drifts. And if you don't know how to upgrade your Pantheons. And this is very important because it's extremely strong. You need to have one of these. The Divine Vessel. They can be sometimes really rare on SSF. You'll just get randomly really unlucky and won't find one until like day 3 or 4. For me. Which is like sometimes week 2 or 3 for a more casual player. Um, depending on how much you play. So it can be really shitty. You can get really unlucky. Um... And then the way it works is I would kill... This is the Desert Springs boss, currently a tier 15 boss. Uh, and when you kill him and return the vial to Sin, it can be a white map. Doesn't You don't need like dangerous maps at all. Um, then uh, you are immune to poison. You're t and it's a very dangerous map mod, right? You A lot of the time have very little chaos rest, so poison damage can be very, very scary. Um, as far as the other ones that are good here... Um, Solaris and Lunaris are the ones that I use the most. Lunaris is what I use a lot for like mapping characters, especially um, just for the movement speed. And then summoners uh, will use it a lot for avoid projectiles that have been chained. It just means you're immune to chain. Your summons won't be, so they can still die, but you won't get like one blasted by chain. Um, Sol Solaris, this is extremely strong, even without upgrading it. Um, the um, upgrading it with, for example, the first one, the Gorgon, that's just if something's doing an elemental slam to you, well, you're taking 8% less damage. It's great if you haven't taken damage recently, which is the case for a lot of boss fights. So um, really, really good there. 20% um, chance to take 50% less area damage from hits. That's like a big chance to survive any slam. Um, and then the fist mitigation. Take no extra damage from critical strikes if you've taken a critical strike recently. It's really nice if you're running into a blue pack with like critical crit strike blue blue pack that could very quickly kill you. And then 50% chance to avoid ailments from critical strikes is also worth upgrading because it makes it um, something that that can save you from is being shocked. So like if a, a liney mob shocks you or sorry uh, hits you and crits instead of shocking you you could avoid it and that can save you there. Um, but pretty much every Pantheon you're using is worth upgrading everything on. Most of the time, this is the combo I use the most. Quite often, it'll be this. Um, sometimes on mapping characters, I've seen people use this. But I feel like being immune to poison is just so insanely strong instead of getting the additional 6% movement speed here. Um, for a lot of energy shield characters and characters that are worried about stun, this is insanely strong. Because it just means that you can't be stun locked. That means that you get stunned once, and then you're free, right? The biggest killer, or one of the biggest killers in Path of Exile, and this is really good for leveling too, is getting, um, like, just blocked. And, like, you're like, okay, great, I can't move, and then you're dead. Also good with builds that do max block and use reckless defense to get crit all the time. True. True. Um, so that is like some like tips on Pantheons there. Valakesh is really good when you're doing lab. The 25% reduced physical damage over time uh, while moving uh, helps from all the... Um, it helps from um, at least the spinny blade traps that are, it does kill quite a lot of people. Uh, and the 25% chance to avoid bleeding is good from the spike traps. 
That is like the main thing for Pantheons that I can think of. I think that might be a good time because it's like dragging on a bit in time. And I think we've covered quite a lot of bases. Maybe only thing I want to cover is maybe like when to choose. Which I'd say you pretty much always want a layered defense. We've just covered all the guard skills. Um, but yeah. Um, when to choose which one. So generally like. Um, on the right side of the tree, like Shadow, Witch, and Ranger, very often go like more evasion based, sometimes block or dodge based, and then uh, bottom left and left side of the tree will go more face tanky, more regen. Um, that doesn't mean you can't do more niche stuff, but yeah, it's it it ends up like that quite a lot because of ascendancies and positioning on the tree. Um, it depends a bit on the league. If the league has huge one hit things you don't necessarily need to try to avoid like getting hit a lot you just want to make sure that you do survive the hits whereas with things like both delirium and legion where there are things that are like just like a machine gun firing at you you want to avoid the majority of the hits because getting hit by one isn't the end of the day it's the fact that you're just getting hit so much so that's like sort of like mentality a little bit there behind it so we're going to end the survival video there Hopefully it helps a lot of you. I don't know. Let me know, uh, especially on YouTube. I, like It seems fairly popular on Twitch right now and people are enjoying it here. But let me know on YouTube how you guys are enjoying these like longer in-depth videos where I haven't done like so much prep work. I'm taking some questions from chat and, and thinking about what to cover. Let me know how this works for you watching on YouTube because I know a lot of people prefer 10 to 15 minute videos. They're like, brap, brap, brap. These are the topics. Um, so let me know. And... Thanks for watching, subscribe to the channel, and try to die less than I do.